Okay. So it is 10.05, so we're gonna get started. So my name is Ashley, and I live in Charleston, South Carolina. So I'm not far from a lot of you all that are tuning in. So thank you all for joining us today. Today we're going to be working on our Coding Basic Badge, which is from the Coding for Good series. So has anyone already earned this badge yet? Maybe? It's one of our newer badges, so I'm excited to be working with this one. So we'll first start off by doing the Girl Scout uh, Promise. So we're just gonna do the Girl Scout Promise today since we're short on time. This is only a 30 minute session. So the Girl Scout Promise is in the bottom right hand corner. So you can stand up or you can sit down so we can see you. But I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna hold my fingers up and we'll say the Girl Scout Promise. On my honor, I will try to serve God and my country to help people at all times and to live by the Girl Scout law. Okay. So we're going to actually cover all three of the badge requirements today, which is very exciting. So you'll be able to earn this badge in full. So the purpose of this badge is that you'll know about algorithms and sequences and coding basically when we're done with this. It's pretty much all the basics you'll learn today. So step one of our badge is we're going to create an algorithm for a computer to follow a sequence. So I know that sounds really big. <laughs> So we're going to make it super basic, and that's why this badge is called Coding Basics. So if I could have one person raise their hand and I will unmute them, and we're gonna talk about some ways that they spend their day right now, like if they follow a schedule or something like that. So if you would like to talk, raise your hand and I'll unmute you. Uh, is Riley Potter raising her hand or no? That's not Riley Potter. Let's see, does anyone want to talk? I do computer, in my school, I do computer class and, and we have like a code thing and we code like the little fuzz balls around. Okay, who is talking? Emma Johnson. Emma Johnson. Emma Johnson. Okay, I'm trying to find your camera. Let's see. <laughs> oh, there you are. Hi, Emma. You're at the top of my screen. You're the one who was eating a snack. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Emma. So tell me how you, like, what's your routine in the morning? What do you do in the morning right now, like on um, during the week? We eat breakfast and then we do our homework packets. And then what else? Chores. Chores, okay, what kind of chores do you do? Be cat, be fish. Do you do that every day? Pick up, yeah. Okay, what do you pick up? Just pick up around the house? No, we pick up our rooms. Okay, and you do that every day too? Yep. Okay, so that's something that we do every day. So tell me something that you might only do on the weekends. Have fun. <laughs> Okay, so you don't have fun uh, during the week at all? We do, but on the weekend, we like 
12 places. Okay. So I understand that. <laughs> so basically your schedule is you wake up, you eat breakfast, you do your homework packet, you do some chores, and then basically you can have an around the house after that during the weekday. Okay. And then on the weekend, I'm assuming you wake up, you eat breakfast, and then you can have fun around the house or outside of the house, right? Yeah? Okay. So yes. that's kind of like a schedule. So computers do the same exact thing. So if we were to tell a computer to wake up, it follows the same exact steps every single time it wakes up. So it does that every single time. Now, if we were to tell a computer to do something different, it would also have steps to do that. So for example, if we were on our computer, which most of us are on a computer or a cell phone right now, and if we were to delete a picture off of there, we don't delete pictures every day, right? Do you delete pictures every day? No? Okay, I don't either. I do take pictures pretty much every day, but I don't delete them every day. But it's a special step that the computer will have to go through, or the cell phone, but cell phones are basically little computers nowadays. But they have to go through a, step, a special step to just delete that picture. But that's not something it does every day. Just like how Emma doesn't have fun every day. Um, let's see. Does anyone else want to share their schedule? You can raise your hand and your camera to see. There's some people I can't really see. Uh, how about the Robinson girls? Do they want to share what they do every day? Daniela would like to share. Daniela would. She's unmuted. Daniela, would you like to share with us? Yes, and I'll see. When Hi, Daniela. Before I go to school, before I do school, I I play a bit. I play a bit in my room with my room with my little brother. Okay, that's exciting. What do you play? We we play with our toys. Sometimes I play with David Track too. We like okay. Play. I like, David like sharing with his track. Okay, so what do you do after you play with your little brother? I, I, I go to, I, 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 I eat breakfast, then I do school. Um, okay, so that's another morning routine. Well, I like that routine. So what do you do on the weekends? So what do you do on Saturday or Sunday? On Sunday? I, we, we play, either me and Sarah, we actually play, we play a lot more than, than on, than on school day, uh, but on okay. Saturday, we like, we like, we like, we like to do certain stuff, and, okay. like, watch TV a lot, and, but we actually like talking TV every day. Yeah. Well, right now we do that a lot around here. So I definitely watch a lot more TV now. So, but that's cool, Daniela. Thank you for sharing that. So just like um, Aunt Emma and Daniela share their schedules, computers, like we said, follow a schedule as well. And that's also how they talk to each other. So that's kind of what coding is, is that it's following a schedule every single day or every time we turn it on or it's also following any time that we tell it to do something. So like I said before, if we tell it to delete a picture, it follows the same steps every single time. So we're gonna go to our next step. Okay, so now we're going to learn about some women in computer science. So there's two women that I chose to feature today. 
the first woman that came to us about writing computer programs is Miss Ada Lovelace. And she's the one that has a drawing of herself. So Miss Ada basically created ways that different machines can talk to each other because it's not always about computers. It's about machines as well. Can anyone think of any type of machines that they use every day, like maybe an oven or a microwave? maybe a dishwasher, like those are machines that are actually computers as well, and they talk to each other. So can anyone think of any steps that like a oven might go through? So like if we were to, or uh, Lindsay, I see that you're raising your hand. Let's unmute you. Hi, Lindsay. Lindsay um, Powell. It's named Lindsay, but um, so what do you do when you um turn on an oven? Like, if you were to bake something, what would you do? Push the different buttons, yeah, exactly. So, you push the different buttons and it turns on the oven to a certain temperature, right. Yeah, and then there's also what we can do is we can set a timer on an oven. So Miss Ada Lovelace, who I was talking about over here, the painting on the slideshow, she helped create algorithms like that. So we can use basic appliances like an oven or even a dishwasher. <laughs> Thank you for sharing, Lindsay. So the next computer scientist I have here is Miss Joy. I cannot pronounce Joy's last name, so we're just gonna call her Miss Joy. So Miss Joy, you see that she's holding a mask in her hand. So this, I know that most of you all probably don't have cell phones yet, but your parents do. And your parents probably have a cell phone that uses facial, facial recognition. Does anyone know what that means? You can raise your hand if you think you might know what facial recognition means. Hi, Ellie. We'll talk to you. You can talk. Look, you just talk. What does facial recognition mean? I think it means that it knows to the person and it only works for that person. Exactly. So it uses your face so the, com the camera will Basically, it knows the measurements of your eyes, and the measurements of your nose, and your mouth, and basically, it just reads your face. So, Miss Joy, she helped make that, and then also, she helped make some laws that prevent facial recognition be from being used in bad ways. Thank you, Ellie, for helping us answer that. Okay, so as you can see, Miss Joy, like she's holding a mask, and behind her is she's got a lot of words on the on this board, and that board right there, basically, was her helping figure out how to create laws on how to properly use facial recognition. So our last step. Is we're going to be working with how to explore algorithms. So how many of you all have actually Googled something? You can raise your hand or type yes in the chat box. Or have you maybe heard your siblings or parents or friends just say, hey, let's Google this, because <laughs> they don't know the answer. Like sometimes where I'm in the grocery store and I don't know what I'm about to buy, so I Google it. <laughs> so what are some ways that maybe you or your parents have used Google in your everyday life? How 
about Emma Winkleman. Do you know how? Anyone has used Google? On the app? Yeah, it can be, you can, on the app. What else do you use Google for anything you don't know? What do I look up all the time? Um, recipes? Yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah, you can definitely look up recipes on Google all the time. Thank you for sharing. We're going to move over to Kathleen. Hi, Kathleen. Questions? This is Hannah. Go ahead, go ahead and say it. Um, it plays songs and tells you the timer. Um, and, and, um. She uses Alexa and and Echo to do Amazon searches. Oh, very cool. Yeah, that's another great one. Very cool. So what are some things that you search for what do you search for hannah music yeah you search for music a lot yes she does okay let's see i saw someone actually physically raise their hand it was lisa i'm trying to find you lisa I can't find you, Lisa. So let's go to, who was it? it was Kelsey McClary, were you raising your hand? Hi, Kelsey. Hi. What are some things you search for in Google? Um, I search, my mom and I like to search for flower seeds and then we like go buy them. That's awesome. Yeah, that's definitely a great way you can use that. Thank you for sharing. Okay, so what are some things that we can sort? So when we Google something, Google sorts things out. So for example, if we were to Google flower seeds, we could say flower seeds that grow well in the summer. So we can sort things by season. So we could say flower seeds that grow well in the winter. And we can type that into Google and Google sorts all the flower seeds out and it tells us what flower seeds actually grow well in the winter or the summer. And we can also sort clothes like in everyday life. That's great, Cameron. Thank you for sharing that. So when we sort clothes, we can sort them into what type of clothes they are. We can also do that by seasons. We can say we have winter clothes or summer clothes. Uh, we can also sort them by color or by, um, especially when we're washing them in the washer, we can say, you know, we're going to wash all the whites or we're going to wash all the darks or all the bright colors. So Google does the same thing and not just Google, but any search engine. I just like to use Google because it's a basic term everyone uses like, oh, let's go Google that. So Google uses that every single time we search for something. So now we're actually going to go into Google. Let's see. Uh, where's my sharing? We're going to share Google and we're going to search for something. So raise your hand if you have an idea of what we could search for. Let's go to the Robinson girls because they haven't talked yet. Hi Robinson we girls. For colors. We can search for you colors. Search for colors? Mm -hmm. What kind of colors? Like rainbow colors, maybe patterns. Okay. So you wanna do like maybe rainbow patterns? So, yes. so hopefully everyone can see my screen 
And I'm just typing in the word rainbow. And these are all the things that come up that people have searched for. So we have tables, just the rainbow itself, rainbow row. Uh, there's a whole bunch of things on here. So let's go for rainbow patterns. So right now Google is searching for everything. And this is what it came up with. Like it came up with these images of different patterns of the rainbow. So just like we use sorting in everyday life, uh, Google just sorted through all the pictures that are in the internet to find rainbow patterns. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. Does anyone else want to search for something so we can see? Let's see. We'll do Emma Winkleman again. Hi, Emma. Hey. What do you want to search for? Doggies. Dogs. What kind of dogs? Can we be more specific? Um, baby dogs. Baby dogs. Um, is there another word for baby dogs? Puppies. There we go. Okay. So let's just type in the word puppies. So it actually brings up not just that, but it's like it brings up searches of where we can buy puppies, or it also brings up hush puppies. There's a cat, a poem. Yeah. So what we can do is at the top of our screen, Aww. images, videos, shopping. So we're just going to go to images. And here we go. We've got a ton of puppies. And then Google even takes it a step further and gives us a way that we can sort through them by saying whether they're cute or adorable, golden retrievers, baby, fluffy, teacup, German shepherd, husky, chihuahua, and so on. So, uh, so on. A -A -A. Why are you still on you? So what, Emma, which one do you want to click on? Which one? Which picture? Mm. Or what, how do we want to sort them? Do we want to sort them by cute, adorable, golden retriever, baby, fluffy? Um, maybe what kind? Yeah. Do you want to go with golden retriever? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or, okay. So let's go with golden retriever puppies. And it brings up all of the golden retriever puppies. <laughs> Okay, let's do one more Google search. Let's see. Someone maybe we haven't talked. How about Lauren Newman? Hi. Hi. Are you Lauren? Um, cool math games. What do you want to do? I'm sorry. Um, cool math games. Oh, cool math games? Cool math games? Is that what you want me to do? <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. So it looks like it's also a website. Is that what you wanted to take us to? It has like, Gracie, go! Oh, God, Grayson. It's okay. Tell us about this website. Um, I like to play Papa's games, like this Papa's um cupcake area, Papa's um um pear cake area. Uh huh. And um, there's a lot of them. Well, that's exciting. So that just took us to a whole bunch of fun games. And very cool. <laughs> well, thank you for sharing. You're welcome. Okay, so that was the end of our Google search. So now we saw basically how we sort things in real life and then how computers sort things in real life. So that is the end of our bash session for today. So thank you all so much for tuning in. And then next week, next, um, what day is this? Monday. <laughs> Next Monday, we're also going to be doing another Daisy Badge. And I'm not sure exactly which one that one is, but it's at the same exact time at 10 o'clock. So thank you all so much for tuning in.
and we will see you all next Monday. And I will also be sending out an email with all of this information that we went over today. So, bye everyone.